Hi guys, pre-recorded Dane here, and today I'm coming at you with a quick review of Birds Who Eat French Fries by Michael Mall. This book was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon, uh, she's the editor of Wrecking Ball Press, and uh, Mike was one of her clients. She reached out and asked me if I'd be interested in reading some poetry, and I said, of course I would. So, because with poetry I think so much of it is subjective really, I'm going to just read some of the poems that I enjoyed, and then I'm going to give it my rating at the end. So, we'll start with Dust. Nature abhors a vacuum, though will tolerate a broom, to sweep away coatings of skin cells, plus hair, pollen, and microscopic particles of burned up meteorites that, when put on airs, circulate through living rooms, until settling down as fine dust, coating tables, TVs and daybeds, where I try to sleep but lie awake instead, to steep all night a floating leaf in cosmic tea. Here we have Loving Memory. At the traffic light I read a decal on the window of the car in front, in loving memory of my brother Fred, spelled out in a circle surrounding a bright green parrot's head, and underneath the living years, 1960 to 2005. At best, it is a sister's bittersweet cry celebrating two worlds, but grief perhaps more than life. Fred's final wish might well have been to not be trapped like a laboratory specimen, sandwiched between sides of automotive glass. To sister of Fred, whose prolonged grieving has driven her to transform a family car into an undertaker's van, where no children sing and healing feels forever lost, I want to say, let Fred go. He may not mind being uncoupled from your car, and be okay if you decide to live your life happily in honour of his own, where he can, after years on the road, be released, finally free to fly to wild parrots, who, recognising him, each take one step left to make room for Fred, the proper way to welcome a brother, no longer on his way, but home. And here we have saying goodbye to the spirit of a friend. Inside the drawer beside your bed is where you stored us while we grew old, tossed together with scrambled bits of black and white negative strips and newspaper clips turned to gold. I hold a single 35mm frame to afternoon window light and see a young you and me peering back. I looked adult, but I was not. Where thick, dark hair hid soft spots in my head and Teutonic cranial plates drifted like continents on a tumultuous sea. I looked closely at us in black and white for signs of foreknowledge of what our lives would be, but if there, I saw none. Just you, a thin man looking back from a summer vegetable patch, with me beside leaning on a hoe. Not a few of our friends, now like you, have passed since then. If our afterlifes exist, as some say, in the memories of those we knew, then today a part of you will go with me in a kind of grace for which the world is rarely thanked for giving. I place the film strip in my pocket and slide shut the drawer. Just one moment snapped up in a day, now tucked away, where I was next to you on broken land. But know this, though you're gone, I will continue weeding spaces where old friends can stay on familiar grounds, where lovely dreams took root and wait there still, patiently, for you, for me, and future days. Here we have things that can become projectiles. In times of emergency, I have seen many things take flight. Pens and forks, butter knives, shoes and keys and wedding rings, one and two. What has been thrown my way is really all the same. Love given back, now taken other forms. What I am confused by now is how one moves ahead to rebuild a life from broken flings, or remembers how to discern the useless from the burn of, fr from the burn of precious things. Here we have a dichotomy of roses. Because we were friends first, I brought flowers to help me say goodbye, to softly say we didn't fit. But because you know better than I how to turn timing, meter and symmetry into flair, even in my awkward moment you smiled, extended your hand to the bouquet, called it beauty hidden in thorns, then said, thank you anyway for the dichotomy of roses. And here we have autumn. Not only did my hairs begin falling from my head, but then within days, bristles began falling from my brush. That is when it occurred to me, I may well be dealing with forces larger than myself. So all in all, I mean, it's contemporary poetry, which I do enjoy. I do enjoy free verse as well. There were a few sort of religious bits that I wasn't so on board with. But um, I mean, as with any poetry collection, there was stuff I enjoyed, stuff I didn't enjoy. Overall, I gave it a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. It was all right. And I recommend if you enjoyed the poems that I read today, uh, going and checking it out yourself. So Bird to Eat French Fries by Michael Moore. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Birds Who Eat French Fries. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you've read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, Bye bye